Good evening guys, how's it going? Welcome to Pete vs Plants, I am Pete and um, these are the plants. So today we're gonna to be doing some chores and to begin with, we're gonna do some repotting, but to begin with, we're gonna deal with some assholes guys. We found some assholes in the collection. One sec. Okay, so I have here the very first Monstera Aurea that I ever purchased and it hasn't done much in a long time guys. It kind of popped. I think you'll be able to see the growth point in there and then it just didn't do much. And I repotted it a little while ago because I was kind of worried. I'm like, maybe there's root rot, maybe there's some sort of issue. And the roots were actually looking really great. So I guess it's just, you know, taking its sweet ass time. But I just had a look at this plant whilst having a little peruse around the collection and noticed that there were some, I think it's soft scale, actually. Yeah, there's some soft scale and I think they've laid eggs on the back of this leaf. I'm not really sure, but I see some kind of like dodgy brown clumps like this and I found a really big one on the side. It was one of those moments where I was looking at the stem and there was this suspicious looking bulb um, that I could see and I can see a few more on the variegated portion under here. So anyway, I've done a video dealing with scale and I had a rather annoying outbreak of it on one of my Thai constellations. So I will link that up above for you to go and check out. But effectively, the long and the short of it is getting some isopropyl alcohol. You can probably use other solvents and all sorts of other nasty insecticides if you want to, but isopropyl alcohol does the trick. So I'm just whoop, dripping a bit on the table. I guess that's good enough. <laughs> I'm going to use a cotton bud with that alcohol on it. And I am going to rub it up and down the crevice here in the leaf, because that's where I think a lot of these guys are hiding. As I could definitely see one or two of them in there before. They're kind of hard to see, but there's one right on the edge there. Maybe if I hold it in front of my bald head, you can probably see that, uh, it's not focusing. Do I, if I do this, this cliche thing, does that work? No, nah. doesn't seem to be focusing, but yeah, anyway, there was one there, guys. And I can see a few on top here, so I'm just gonna rub some alcohol on them. Sometimes they're really, really kind of cemented onto the leaf, but the alcohol should do the trick, otherwise a fingernail often does too. You can wipe it down with alcohol too, using a wet wipe. Oof. Found some dodgy looking things that look like they could potentially be eggs. I'm not sure, but I will rub the alcohol on that anyway. And yeah, I'm just gonna have a good look over the top of the leaf to make sure I haven't missed any obvious dudes, nasty little dudes. Hmm. You'll have to leave a comment below and let me know guys if you have any good tips and tricks for dealing with scale. I haven't found them to be a massive issue to be honest. They just pop up and initially when I first saw them, I kind of freaked, but I haven't had like, you know, insane outbreaks of them on my plants. I don't think they ever get to that point if you're keeping on top of things, you know, so, but yeah, knock on wood. Oop, just dripped a bit again on the bottom here. Okay, so sides of the stems. Well, the petioles here too. Looking at those. Ooh. Can I see some big ones down here? No, there's just some lumps on the stem. Hmm. Just gonna keep rubbing some of these suspicious looking spots. Think I just got another one. Yeah, there's a few on the bottom here. I need to turn around and use the light so that I can see what I'm doing. Little one there. Got you, mate, you're a goner. You are done, you are out. And I th think Oh, massive one, guys. <laughs> Here's the mama. So, let's see if you can see that. If I come close, there you go. Can you see that guy there? That's a big one. So, I'm just going to uh, scrape him off. And there you go. Probably can't see too well, but yeah. Oh, there's another one here too. Oof, big one. Cool. So, I think... I've dealt with it for now, although these guys do tend to come back, so I think they probably end up laying their eggs or reproducing asexually and leaving incredibly small babies all over the place that are just really hard to see with the naked eye. 
few more here that I can sort of remove with my fingernail. Um, ooh, little one here. Yeah, they are pretty annoying, to be honest. I might just, my last little ditch effort to get rid of these guys. The good thing is when you just have a single leaf like this, right? I'm just gonna put some alcohol on a bit of paper toweling like this and then rub it across the leaf gently. And yeah, it should hopefully get rid of any ones that I missed, any of the ones that I missed or any of the ones that I couldn't see. So that's the top. Bottom as well. And I guess I will just keep an eye on this plant over the next month or so. I suspect they'll appear again. They tend to pop up every now and then, but as long as you're keeping an eye on things like this, you usually get them when there's only one or two and uh, it doesn't become a huge outbreak. Anyway, so there you go, there's chore one and I am really, really hoping this plant will take off at some point because the variegation on this thing was just stunning when I got it. I was so, so pumped to get this. I think it's still one of my most favorite leaves in the collection, but to date, after probably several months at least, it's done nothing. Okay, so I'm gonna leave, I'm putting him back in the collection. Chuck him out of the way so nothing bad happens. Whoop. Almost lost it. Okay, so we finished up with that. Now, I'm gonna chuck this stuff out and grab myself a drink. Suggest you guys do the same. I wish I had a beer, but I don't. So I'm just gonna grab a caffeinated beverage. I'm looking around trying to find a uh, decent stubby holder so that I can hide the brand, but a bit too late. Maybe I can um, <laughs> use the, the planter's version. Uh, I don't think that's gonna work. It's funny, in Australia, so we call them stubby holders. A stubby is sort of like a short, bottle of beer that is made of glass. Um, we would call tin ones or aluminium ones now, but back in the day they were tin. We would call them tinnies and in Australia now we call the glass ones stubbies and the neoprene kind of protective thing that you can shove onto one of these to keep them cold is called a stubby holder. But my dad calls them neoprene condoms. <laughs> so anyway, I was looking around for one of those as I used to have them on the shelves here in the old house, but I see none that are sitting there currently out and about and available, so I guess you'll just have to see the brand. Okay, so now I thought we could repot and I've forgotten to wash off this mat, so just don't look at the, the grossness that is um, my potting mat here. I'm just gonna fold this bit forward, I think. But I have had this Monstera Deliciosa with roots, the aerial roots seem to have just gone ballistic. And you can tell they're aerial roots because they have this sort of outer sheath to them that is very, it's almost leathery. Like you, you feel it, it's kind of got this sort of really sort of, I don't know, leathery kind of texture to it. Anyway, there's another one coming out the top here. Not sure if you can see that, but it's gone, it's grown down and then come up. This is actually a different one, I think. Oh no, it's the same one. It's the same one, that tr totally tricked me. I thought these were two different roots. I thought this one had come on and then gone down, but it has actually grown up. How crazy is that? Anyway, so what I would do with a plant like this, where I don't think the root system, yeah, there's plenty of space in there. You can feel it just from squishing it around. Uh, the root system hasn't taken up a lot of the space and it's probably not due yet for a repot in terms of uh, needing more space. It is because the roots are coming out and I kind of want them all contained within the container. So what I'm gonna do is pretty much just repot it back into the container here and make sure that these roots are nice and tucked in. So I'm just gonna pour this soil out and then hopefully gently coax, Let's see if I can give you a better view. Coax this root through the hole at the bottom of the pot here without breaking it. And there are actually three plants in here. I took a few propagations uh, when I first started getting into plants. And look how sneaky this is. I was thinking maybe I didn't put some of the mesh down there, but clearly the mesh was there and this guy's just worked his way around the outside. Look at that, sneaky, sneaky, sneaky. So I guess I'll try and separate the mesh from the root ball. Ooh. Jesus. Yeah, the roots, 
in some of these, they've grown through in this bit here, it's grown through and then come around the other side. I think it might be the same story for many of these roots too. So that's, that's kind of difficult. I don't want to do a lot of damage to these guys. So, hmm, can I pull the mesh back and just tuck this root into it? That might be the answer to make sure that he is behind the mesh like so. So I've kind of lifted this up, tucked him in behind it, and then brought the mesh up and around. Hmm. Because, yeah, the idea of using mesh like this is to, one, prevent the soil coming out of the holes at the bottom, but also to hopefully keep the roots in place as well. Okay, so I guess that's sort of done it. And then this one, <laughs> I don't know how I'm gonna deal with this guy. He's sort of poking up because I feel like if I try and force him downwards, he's probably gonna snap. Um, I guess we'll give it a go. I'll try and do this gently. So I'm just gonna try and turn him sideways. Oh, it's actually worked. Okay, sweet. So I'm gonna keep him positioned down and just put the soil back over the top. Nice. And hopefully he doesn't grow back up the pot. I've only, I found that they do that quite often with aerial roots if they hit the pot and then they somehow angle themselves up. And it probably because of the tamper of a lot of these pots pointing upwards. If they hit at a right angle, they're probably more likely to go up than down because of the angle. Um, yeah, so I don't know. You guys have to tell me if that's a problem you faced in the past because it's something that I've noticed quite a bit recently where I've had a number of different Monstera deliciosas in particular with their roots coming out of the pot from below. I think it happened to a Thai constellation. It's happened to one of my mint variegated um, Monsteras as well. And I had to use some wire to kind of like coax it. The, the root was coming sort of out and around and I had to sort of like push it back down into the soil and then use some wire to keep it down. And it seems to have worked, but I guess time will tell. Anyway, all right, so I'm just gonna get most of this soil back if I can. And then probably give this guy water. The soil seems pretty dry. And he currently lives in, in the ensuite bathroom, soaking up the rays through an east facing window. Okay. All right, I think we are all good. So I'm just gonna give him a water. I'll give him a thorough drenching and we'll get into the next plants. We've got some interesting ones. We've got a philodendron, we've got a, I forgot the species name actually, a coffee plant, and then some crassula, crassula, crassula. We'll get into those. Okay, so yeah, I guess it's coffea arabica. Arabica, coffea, coffea arabica. So I saved this one from Bunnings. It was looking a bit worse for wear. I think they had overwatered this shit out of it. And I decided as a coffee lover, that I wanted to try and save it and yeah, have managed to do so. So it's looking pretty lush now. It's looking great despite being indoors. I think these things can take full sun, you know, I assume so. When I was over in Indonesia doing field work there for my PhD, um, I was over there on Sulawesi, the sort of K-shaped island in the middle of, of um, Indonesia there. And they had coffee fields all over the place and it was just, it was amazing to see chocolate fields too. Um, there were loads of coconut farms. It was just phenomenal. But yeah, to actually see the coffee out there uh, growing on, on trees was just like, oh, this is amazing. But yeah, definitely envious of those guys in Indonesia. They seem to have the most amazing weather in terms of growing tropical plants, aeroids. You know, big surprise considering they're in the tropics. But I was watching, actually I was watching Sean Sean's video, so Only Plants, uh, on YouTube recently. He's done, I think there are three videos that he did on a sort of conference, a plant conference, an aeroid plant conference. Actually, it may have been just all sorts of plants because there were ferns, succulents, um, carnivorous plants. So yeah, it wouldn't just be aeroids, obviously. But he, he showed in that video the most expen expensive plant I've ever seen, aeroid plant. So the Spirit of Sancti is one of those plants that is renowned for being, you know, rare and, and really expensive. 
And even the variegated one I've seen, um, there's a variegated version. Someone in the US managed to grow out a bunch from seed and ended up getting a variegated one. That plant is ridiculously expensive. I think I've seen them for about, I think recently there was one that was like $40,000 American for a plant, which was crazy. But when I was watching Sean's video recently, there was someone who managed to find or breed or grow, whatever, a philodendron UPI variegata, right? A variegated UPI. And the thing was stunning. And it was like, I think from memory, it was 13,000 US dollars a leaf. And the plant had like 10 or 12 leaves on it. So I was just like, in Australian dollars, that'd be like $160,000 for that plant. Just amazing. Just <laughs> frightening slash, you know, sort of astonishing. Um, yeah, and especially when you consider, I think I was doing the math, the average monthly wage in Indonesia, actually the median is something like $780. And I was thinking, so that's probably like an annual wage to buy a single leaf of that plant. And therefore the entire plant would be like a decade of work for the median income earner in Indonesia. It's just, it's just sort of, you know, mind blowing, right? That there are some plants out there that are worth, worth that much, right? That's, yeah, that's huge amounts, huge amounts of money. And in a country like Indonesia too, where you're just like far out in, over there, that's how much they're charging for it. If that was in Australia, that would probably be like half a million dollars or more to get that kind of a plant. And, you know, I, I don't think you would have many buyers that would be able to lash out that kind of money. But yeah, it just blew my mind. Hopefully we end up with those coming our way one day in the future, but it might be a while for them to arrive in Australia. Anyway, so here is the coffee plant. I'll give them a water in a bit, but yeah, seemed to grow really quickly. Um, filled out this little pot that I had. I sort of took it out of the pot that it came in because it was suffering from root rot and was just massively overwatered. So yeah, chucked it in this, but the downside was that these small pots with plants like this that sort of grow voraciously the root mass grew so quickly that I had to water it almost every other day. It was probably even, yeah. Yeah, it was probably once every two days it was getting to that point. So I was like, yeah, okay, you need a, a repot. So again, I've just sort of put it in some well-draining soil. It could probably handle, I think I was looking it up and it can handle more acidic soil. It likes well-draining soil, so probably perlite heavy. So it should be fine in this, you know, standard aeroid kind of mix. Um, but I'll just keep an eye on it and see how it goes, I'm mainly doing it like this because I'm sort of a heavy waterer because of the well draining mixes that I use for the aeroids. So if I put this guy into a denser mix, I think I would probably end up over watering it, watering it too frequently and the mix getting too, too wet. So yeah, that's my rationale anyway. You guys will have to let me know if you've grown out any coffee plants. I'm not sure if I'd ever be able to get this thing to produce coffee to fruit, right, in the climate that I live in because I live in um, near Melbourne in Victoria. So it's pretty temperate. I think we're at about, what are we at? Latitude of about 37, I think, maybe 37.4. So yeah, we're sort of halfway to Antarctica in terms of from the tropics. So I'm not sure if we'll ever be able to get these guys to fruit, but I know that we can grow coffee in Australia up in the tropics or at least subtropics in um, Queensland. So who knows? Maybe I just need to create the artificial environment inside to actually grow my own coffee, get a little grow tent for this guy, boost the humidity, I guess we'll see. All right, so next, whilst we're on the small pots, this is a philodendron Esmeraldense, or Esmeraldense. I assume it's probably Esmeraldense. Um, I was really, really pumped to get one of these when I saw, I saw, uh, I'm trying to think of the guy's name, it's Memo. And I've, the Planty Goodness, Planty Goodness is his channel. I had a brain fart for a moment. So he has an absolutely spectacular one of these behind him. You'll always see it when he's filming his care videos and everything. It's sort of, I think it's on the right hand side. So I think it'll be on this side when I actually edit this film. Um, and it's just spectacular. It's a philodendron that has these huge leaves. They get ripples in them, kind of like the Billy Etier and um, uh, what are the others? There's a few of these other ones that get like these longer leaves that have these ripples and the VCI, you know, though that's an anthurium. That sort of vibe I really, really like. And so when I saw his one, I think I sent him a message and was like, what the hell is that behind you? And I'm just looking close up. I think I can see some of the predatory mites that I released. 
the other day. So I don't really want to damage those guys. They're little red mites that are running around on the leaves killing spider mites. So I'll have to be gentle. Um, anyway, yeah, so I sent him a message and was like, mate, what is that plant behind you? It's absolutely stunning. And he was like, it's an esmeralda dance, a philodendron esmeralda dance. They're not that popular, but I love it. So as soon as he told me what it was, I was like, how do I find one here in Australia? Went Googling and found one that is obviously out of tissue culture, just based on the growth pattern you can see here. You can usually tell if there's multiple growth points, like growth heads that are coming out of a single kind of area, pot. And also the leaf size, if the leaves are really tiny, like you can see this kind of size and there's this sort of bushy. It's quite often a dead giveaway that the things come out of tissue culture. So that's what I assume has happened here anyway. Doesn't really bother me at all, especially if the plant's acclimated, it's not a problem whatsoever. Um, as you can see, you know, had no issues with this plant at all and I have underwatered the shit out of it <laughs> because again, it's in one of these cups and I just keep forgetting to water it, but it seems to be taking it like a boss. Um, the only issue that I think I would worry about is if, that I want to, if I want to grow it up a pole and I've got this many plants sort of pushed into one, it's, I feel like it's going to bush out a bit more or it's going to at least have its growth kind of stunted, its potential. Um, because of the just number of plants in here, probably all competing for root space. So that's something that I'll probably consider in the future, though I might just take cuttings from this, this bush and then eventually try and grow some up a pole. But yeah, it's an absolutely beautiful plant and um, I'm so glad that I got it and I can't wait for it to size up because yeah, as I said, go check out Memo's channel, Plenty Goodness, and you will see in the background instantly. It's the first thing you notice on any of his videos, um, at least I think any of the ones that I've seen recently, it's sitting there behind him over his uh, left shoulder and it's just stunning. And yeah, you can see <laughs> there's quite a bit of algal, algal build up here. So it is probably time to move this guy along. And oof. yeah, so I'm just gonna break up the roots a little bit here, do a bit of a better job than I did with the coffee plant. Though the coffee plant had pretty delicate roots, so I didn't really want to do too much sort of fiddling around. And it's so funny how you kind of get spoilt with aeroids, especially philodendron and monstera, when you get so used to repotting them and them having these kind of like fat succulent roots, you know, and then you go and play with other plants. Like anytime I repot a begonia, I'm just like, fuck me, the, the roots are so fine and small. And I think there are probably loads of plants where that's the norm and you just forget, right? You just, you forget that that's, <laughs> yeah, I don't know, but I just, I get kind of, um, I get stuck with the plants that I've got like this and I'm like, oh man, it's so, so easy to kind of treat brutally and, you know, fluff around and if you snap off a root every now and then, it's not too much of a big deal. I assume it's the same thing with the small roots, right? You can probably break a lot more, but anyway, yeah, it is funny how I get used to the aeroid stuff and you play with other plants and you're like, oof, this is so, so weird. I feel like I'm out of my comfort zone. Like, what do I do? These roots are so tiny and fragile. Do I need to, you know, handle this guy with gloves, with cotton gloves on or what? Okay. <laughs> I was chatting to Nora the other day, the Lekka Queen, and I was giving her a hard time because I saw her doing her repotting and she was using, um, I think she was using latex gloves. Um, you guys will have to let me know if you, when you're repotting plants, wear gloves or not. I think she was saying something like, I'm a girly girl, so of course I wear gloves. <laughs> and I guess it makes sense if you've got, you know, your nails done and you don't want, um, soil under your fingernails and everything. But I guess I'm just, I'm just that kind of person who just, I like kind of being close and in contact with the soil. I actually really enjoy that aspect of it, you know, kind of feel closer to nature as a result. But, um, yeah, you'll have to let me know if you guys are glove wearers or not when, when repotting. All right, I think we're good. Doesn't look like there's any air pockets that I have accidentally left in the chunky mix here. Sweet, so I think she's probably gonna size up quite quickly now as a result of being repotted. And you can see that the main plant, this one in the middle is already sizing up its leaves really quickly. I'm trying to look for the last leaf before this big one. It's difficult to see. I think, I think it's actually this leaf here, funnily enough. It's always interesting to see how they size up. So was it, was it this one that I was grabbing? So this was the most recent one. 
and then that one came out and you can already see those ripples coming in. So yeah, pumped to see how this goes. And the next leaf looks like it is coming out here as well. Okay, so on to the final task for this video, I think. Maybe we'll just move this soil out of the way. Because I'm not making too much noise for you guys. And I have two Crassulas baby necklaces here. So I got these from Jayco's. I actually bought one ages ago. It was this one. And he's actually been sort of home to my resident spider in the collection. So there is actually, I think probably a house spider in here, a little black one. Um, they're not the best things if you get bitten by them, but he had just been mauling all the fungus gnats, or she, and living her best, best life. So I just kind of, you know, let nature do its thing. Didn't bother me too much. Probably keeping away all the other creepy crawlies that I don't really want in the collection. So yeah, that was the home to it. Now, I, I think I was watching Summer Rain's channel on YouTube and I saw her talking about this plant and I saw an absolutely beautiful basket of these crassula plants. And you can see, although this is the first one that I bought and I think it was up to here when I bought it and it kind of eventually lent sideways. Initially, it was just facing straight upwards and then it sort of, what would you call it? Like quad, quadricated, like bifurcate is turned into two, but it suddenly spat out four tetra, tetraficated. <laughs> it's, suddenly spat out four um, points here. And so I was like, oh, that looks really cool. But anyway, I was watching Summer Rain's video and she showed someone who had like a hanging basket. So I've got one of these little hanging baskets here. And I thought that was kind of cool to have a succulent in a hanging basket, but also they just look like dreadlocks coming out. Um, and they had a whole bunch. And it's interesting to see the color difference. I'm, I'm not sure if it's coming up that well on screen. I'm not sure if, I assume it's the light that I've been giving the plant. I'm not sure if it's been, this was the more recent buy. I'm not sure if I was giving this plant more light than it, need, than it needs or less light, but this one definitely looks a little more lime green and this one's sort of almost silvery turquoisey green. But anyway, um, I wanna pot these up together because yeah, I would just love a whole group of these kind of dreadlocks to be coming out of a basket here, hanging from from something. And the cool thing is it looks like the plant actually shoots out more shoots from the base of itself. So hopefully just having two in this pot is gonna be enough and they will just shoot out more and more plants. I think propagation wise, what you can do is just take, you can just chop these kind of tendrils um, off and then remove a bunch of these leaves off the base and just shove it into the soil and it should eventually root. So you could also do that with all these points and I imagine it keeps growing and it'll keep doing this. So yeah, I might look into that in the future, but for today, I think we will just pot these two up and I'm trying to think of arrangement. I might just have them sort of like that, kind of look like antlers <laughs> coming out like this and we'll see how it grows going forward. So I'm just gonna take this guy off the pot. We'll put it back on later. And I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use some aeroid mix, but I've got some succulent soil here. So I'm just gonna mix up a bit of that. So I went and just grabbed that out of the garage earlier, just to hopefully, I don't know, hold on to a bit of of the moisture that might go in there. I'm not sure, I'm still sort of learning with succulents, but I assume that they don't want really, really high draining, rocky, kind of like really chunky soil. I imagine they don't want wet soil, but I'm not sure how they would go just sitting in my chunky mix with, you know, huge bits of orchid bark like this and um, the chunky perlite that I'm using as well. I have a feeling that might just be a little bit too coarse and it may, it may just constantly be drying out. Um, I don't know, yeah, I don't know. You guys will have to let me know what your succulent mix is. Uh, I think I'm totally, totally ignorant when it comes to, to succulents currently. I have a few of them and I've killed a few actually. Out of the plants that I've killed, I think the majority have been succulents. And unfortunately it's because I think I've moved a lot of them outside thinking, oh, they need more light. They're probably not getting en enough light inside and then they end up getting rained on, I don't notice. And it's, Recently, we've had loads of rain in Australia because of the uh, La Nina. So we've had the La, La Nina event, which effectively, I think it's where, I think it's where the oceans of releasing a lot more moisture into the atmosphere. And as a result, you end up with loads more storms and rain 
precipitation and everything. And so we've had loads of floods this year and we've had rain down here, at least where I live, pretty much just constantly um, for several months. And it's probably gonna continue the La Nina. I think it's gonna continue for another year or so. Um, so yeah, anyway, long story short, the plants that I put outside didn't have a good time of it. <laughs> Talk about fine roots, by the way. I often find that the succulents have really fine roots. So yeah, I'm not sure how, maybe we'll just rest him kind of like this where those leaves have already died. And I guess I'll get this guy out. So it's so funny how they kind of get so top heavy. Like I've had to have this guy resting on something to stay upright or else he just keeps tipping over. And I'm not sure where this spider is. I don't want to kill it. I also don't want to get bitten by it. And I also don't want to bury him in the soil, but might be unavoidable. Okay, so perhaps we sort of arrange it like so. That might be good. Although it'd be nice to have things sort of meet in the middle a little better. All right, maybe like that will do. Just gonna mix up this soil a bit more. Cool. And then I'm just gonna <laughs> kind of dump it on and pat it down and let it fill in the gaps. So yeah, and this one definitely needs a water. So hopefully that's, that um, ends up growing really nicely guys. I'm not sure what to expect. Not sure what to expect, still learning. So any of you succulent, you know, maestros out there, you guys who are masters at this, genus or this group, this family, definitely let me know um, how I've already <laughs> made a bunch of mistakes and what I can do to improve. <laughs> All right. Sweet. Well, I think I'm going to give these guys a water. Thank you so much for joining me. It's been a pleasure. I love hanging out with you guys. In the meantime, YouTube reckons you're going to enjoy this video. Go check it out. I'll see you there. Tururu.